Uh, my name is Neil Chamberlain, and my job title is I'm a professor of microbiology. What is your degree, or how much education is required for your position? I have a, a PhD in medical microbiology and immunology and for my job it requires a bachelor's degree usually in some kind of science. I was a biology chemistry minor, biology major, chemistry minor and then I, uh, I didn't get a master's degree so I went right from my bachelor's degree and got a PhD so you need at least a uh, doctor in philosophy in order to do what I do for a living. What are some personal characteristics that you feel are necessary for microbiologists? Well, I think one thing for microbiology is a little different than some of the other like biological sciences. There's a real need to attention for detail, um, and little things do matter a lot. So, uh, somewhat like some interest in biochemistry, because microbiology is a kissing cousin is biochemistry, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of biochemistry in my field. The other thing is to be able to you can waste an awful lot of time in my job. So, having a good sense of where you want to be and setting goals for yourself mm -hmm. <clears throat> because you can just sort of waste an awful lot of time. And if you don't set up goals for yourself where you want to be in the next year, two years, six months, <clears throat> then you look up and suddenly realize, hmm, I didn't get anywhere. So, so being, being able, able to prioritize. Right, exactly, yeah. prioritize and set uh, goals for yourself where you want to be. And understanding the mission of what the school has. Uh, each school has slightly different missions. and seeing if your talents match up with that school's mission are important too. On a daily basis, how would you describe your job? Well, that's kind of interesting because my day, daily job differs pretty much every day. That's what's kind of nice about my job. It's um, If I'm in the midst of teaching, a lot of my day is around preparing for lectures and giving lectures and preparing labs and giving labs, those sorts of things. Um, but I have times when there's lots of lecturing going on and times when there's not much lecturing going on, um, which is kind of a nice thing about my job here. When there's not a lot of teaching going on, then <clears throat> I'll be doing research. And how my day goes depends upon sort of the experiment that I plan for that day, how busy that day is depends upon what the experiment is and how long, how involved it is and that sort of thing. <clears throat> the other thing that happens is there's a lot of clinic, a lot of committee type work that I do and so it depends upon the day there as to when the committee meets and so scheduling my research around that and teaching around that um, is also another thing. So there's a lot of variety. Were you ever in the field of microbiology before you became a professor or did you just go straight into professor? That's a good question. Um, actually I wasn't. Uh, where I got interested mm -hmm. in microbiology was when I went to undergraduate. Um, I wasn't able to take the regular microbiology course that a lot of the biology majors took. So I took nursing med, med micro course. And for me, it, would, it really spurred my interest because I was interested in doing something that would help humans mm -hmm. as far as my research. And then, but I really didn't like some of the uh, physiology type of labs where there was an awful lot of experimentation with larger animals. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't quite as interested in that. Um, and then when I got into micro and we were identifying unknowns and medical micro, uh, and it just really, uh, it just tricked uh, flipped the right switch for me and I said this was where I'd really like to spend the rest of my life. So, I guess where do microbiologists typically work? Good question. That was the other thing that intrigued me. There's a wide variety of places that microbiologists can work. Um, my initial interest was to maybe work in a hospital laboratory. Um, a lot of medical technologists are microbiologists. <coughs> so I thought about becoming a medical technologist and specializing in micro. Um, now, so that's one area, and there's a lot of need for people that have those abilities. Um, the uh, Another area where microbiologists are used a lot is, is in governmental research labs, um, in that uh, uh, there's uh, quality assurance type things that need to be done, a lot of industry um, quality assurance needs to be done, um, making sure the product isn't contaminated um, uh, with an organism that might cause human injury, especially with health care products and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, so in industry, there are places, I have a friend that works for Eli Lilly, and so the, they're doing research and development on products that help humans, and, and he's in the veterinary science area, so he's working with products that help animals as far as uh, their health. 
other places that microbiologists can work is um, not just as a medical technologist, but also PhDs in medical micro can become, uh, can oftentimes be in charge of laboratories, hospital laboratories, or laboratories that do uh, process samples for humans. Um, mm -hmm. and so, for instance, I have a friend that works for LabCorp. Uh, I've actually two friends that work for LabCorp that did their postdoctoral fellowships in laboratory medicine. They're in charge of laboratories. Another friend that's in charge of a laboratory at University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati and uh, Children's Hospital. So that's another place. Um, some industries will hire them to see, uh, to do, uh, like they may have some process that's messed up um, and micro microorganisms might be involved in affecting that process and so sometimes they're hired as consultants and that sort of thing. And then microbiologists are oftentimes used as educators uh, mm -hmm. at colleges and universities and uh, researchers in those places. Do you have any tips for high school students considering pursuing a career in microbiology or education? Well, I went to a small school, um, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, which is similar size to Truman State University, and it was a small liberal arts school. Um, so we didn't have a microbiology major, um, but uh, I took biochemistry and medical micro and those sorts of things to get me uh, to get the spurred my interest. I actually took a really wide range of biology courses, mm -hmm. so I realized, well, I don't want to do that. And this I really am interested in. So. Um, but some schools, like University of Missouri, um, I know Penn State, and some other places, they actually have a microbiology major. So if someone's really interested in that, that can be helpful. I didn't think it was the, uh, it, I had some friends that were microbiology majors, um, and I thought at first, oh, I'm in trouble because I went to graduate school, they were microbiology majors, I was just a biology major. Mm -hmm. It really didn't affect my ability to progress in the, in the graduate work. Um, you know basically perseverance and persistence, working hard are those things that get you through graduate school. And so um, he had some advantage at the beginning because he sort of knew stuff, but the trouble was he also was kind of bored with some of it because he had seen it already several mm -hmm. times. And it, for me, it was relatively novel. So that helped as far as the learning. Um, so I encourage though that if you're going to go into microbiology, either biochemistry or biology type of major or concentration would probably help you the most as far as preparing for a microbiology career. So enjoying biology and chemistry classes in high school would be yeah. Oh, yeah, a would good help. predictor. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just a more rigorous science type approach, taking some chemistry, some biology to see what you like. That would help you a lot as far as college too. How does your field relate to public health? There's actually quite a bit. I, one, one other profession that people can go into and I thought about that deals a lot with public health is Centers for Disease Control. And they send out people when there's these big outbreaks, uh, for instance when there was an Ebola, Ebola outbreak in Africa and um, they basically sent some CDC researchers out there, some of those are microbiologists, many of them were physicians, mm -hmm. that went out and worked up the samples, brought them back, um, and determined it was Ebola virus that was killing people in, in Africa, I don't think 10 years ago or so. Um, and so the uh, microbiologists have been quite intimately involved with public health for a lot of years. For instance, you know, knowing uh, how to properly uh, treat waters, uh, disease spread, disease transmission, those kinds of things. Uh, there's a lot of close relationships and how to maintain yourself uh, hygiene-wise so that you don't get sick or give others what you have. Um, there's a the medical microbiology in particular tends to have a good number of things to say about um, improving people's public health. So. Okay, so working closely with like epidemiologists yeah. and water treatment and that kind of yeah. Stuff. It's a slightly different field we have in that epidemiology, I've realized this, epidemiologists have very different language than the microbiologists oh, okay. and, a, and a very different way of saying things than what I would say it as. But if, mm -hmm. if people would, you know, with transmission and those sorts of things, we can be somewhat helpful as far as uh, helping epidemiologists determine the various things they need to in order to finish their studies. So.